good morning to all of you we were looking last time a single ended diffam and uh, and we were trying to show that this single ended opam uh, sorry, diffam uh, one of the gate inputs of a p channel device a uh, gate of that is connected to one of the output which is v out 1 and that's makes it single ended we also have derived from this by variety of ways that this vp remains constant so ac for ac that can be treated as ground so this is what we did last time i'll just show the last equivalent circuit which i drew what we said last time that since v out 1 is an ac output for m4 that is acting like an input okay because it's connected since it is connected this will act like an input and since this is equal to of this value so there is an input signal for m4 and there is an input signal for m2 and we say since both have the same res output resistance this ro parallel this or this parallel this for this output at the node both transistors are give ro parallels therefore ro p parallel ro n is always at the output resistance independent whether you drive from here or you drive from here and if you superimpose on them the output net v out can be obtained that's what we discussed last time and we derived finally a equivalent circuit which uh, i just re want to do it again show you again that for the m1 m3 side uh, you have a gm vid by 2ro1 ro3 parallel gm3 and this is gm3 may dominant because it's a diode connection there and therefore this may actually dominate over ro3 uh however as i said vo1 output is vgs4 and that is further used here in the m2 m4 side and we say the gm2 vid by 2 ro2 ro parallel again i said it but this again gm4 will be neglected because this will dominate and then this is the next source coming from the other input at the m4 m uh, yeah m4 and then if i since i use the same ros both so i can directly add or subtract the currents and then put across this resistance to get the output voltage which is essentially doing superposition okay you stop this get a drop stop this get a drop add up okay okay so this was what last time we did uh so let's look at the actual values uh, actual expressions uh since vgs1 is vid by 2 and vgs2 is minus vid by 2 is reasonable assumption we also observe that vgs3 is vgs4 or vgs3 if you are small signal you look at as i say some books may show you so essentially if the vx is the output at node voltage which is our v out 1 then it is gm vid a combination of ro1 parallel ro3 parallel gm3 whichever will be smaller will be dominating okay so i just right now kept all three in parallel in reality whichever comes smaller among the three will take care okay 1 upon r plus 1 upon r1 plus. so whichever is smaller is the dominant term so i just right now for the sake of simplicity or generality i put ro13 gm as the this resistance output and then gm times this is there so gm1 by and if finally if that becomes gm3 dependent which is the smallest among them or gm3 is very large compared to ro1 upon ros so gm3 will dominate so you get gm1 upon 2 gm3 times vit now this fact that this is the output of the first stage that is m2 m1 m3 is going to be the input for m4 is what is going to be utilized to get the final vo value okay so this derivation is necessary simply because this is going to be an input to the m4 at the other side okay is that okay so this is what we did last time so far maybe this expression i just showed you so from here you can get if you see a value of this if you are holding the current constant as the iss then 
you can see from here it is only a function of w by l and mu because 3 is p channel device. So, it is essentially governed by the ratio of w by l and also mu n by mu p all under roots. Okay. So, we can we always know roughly how much is the uh, size of the transistors and we can get p out. Alternatively what will be given to us? Given some final gains, we will have to come back and figure out what is the size of w 1 by l 1 and w 3 by l 3. But typical designs since all, all circuits are kept symmetric in most cases except for the uh, uh, perturbations they have, uh, one can always say g m 1 will be equal to g m 2 and g m 3 will be equal to g m 4 okay. or to say size of 3 and 4 will be same and 1 and 2 will also be same except that they may have some variations even if we feel that we are done in the same technology zone. Okay. So, that essentially is why CMRR comes finite otherwise it would have been infinite. Okay. So, this is the only criteria you should look that this is a size dependent gain. It only depends on the sizes of the two transistors or a designer my only interest is in getting the surface sizing okay, because these are called mask in fabrication. So, for each layer what should be the channel length, what should be the channel width that mask which I will create at the end for the gate is going to decide my performance. So, please remember my output is only sizes okay. given is uh, circuit specification I must arrive at the sizes of every transistor because when I translate them into a circuit for fabrication, I will have to generate layout that layout will be depending on w by l which I create and those will be then transferred on silicon during fab and hopefully chip may work. Okay. Normally, it may larger the technology node more guaranteed will work. We will see today if time permitting if short channel happens what is the major worry with us. There are many worries, but one of the major worries I may show you. So, is that okay? So, I can calculate the input to V uh, M4 or to say output of the first stage, which is V1. Now, looking at the output side, the second part of the circuit, uh, we know V out is output voltage with minus VID input and VO with VGS4 as the another input. So, we just superpose them For as I just now said the method is open a current source use the only one of them open the other one and start looking for the other current source. So, if I do that by substituting all this it will become V out will be G M 4 R O 2 4 where R O 2 4 is R O combina parallel combination of R O 2 and R O 4 is that clear this is a shortening writing. R O 2 4 is nothing but parallel combination of R O 2 and R O 4 that is at the output side what is the uh, impedance you are seeing output impedance parallel combination of output resistance of 2 and 4. I repeat what I said if you see the circuit these are the only output resistances are in parallel R O due to this R O due to this which are at this node are parallel is that okay? R O here R O here at the output both are in parallel because this is ground for AC, this is ground for AC, this is ground for AC. So, these two resistances are in parallel for this node is that correct for this node. As I said since G M 4 is not a diode connected ROs will dominate G M 4 is almost infinite kind of. So, it will uh, it is it will not be see I have kept it there because in case tomorrow you do something else there that term may there and automatically it will get cancelled if it is larger or smaller corresponding. In general I kept it, but as such it will not be there because it is not diode for this it is G M 3 is appearing for this there is no diode connection is that is a normal transistor whose output resistance is just the R O. Same is true for 2, same is true for true okay. unless there is a diode connection the G M will not dominate is that correct we have done that case 
or a diode connecting load and that is what we proved that time. Okay, so, the I did I substitute all these values once again V g s 4 is V out 1 minus uh, this and by substituting finally, I get V out is equal to g m 1 g m 4 and assuming right now g m 1 is g m 2, g m 3 is g m 4, all p channels are identical or n channels are identical. That means, what are identical? Their w bias are identical, their thresholds are identical. Is that correct? The identical word means the mu c ox is constant, mu n c ox is same for both, v t s are same for both and w bias are same for both. This is essentially means identical. As I said, I repeatedly saying perturbations will take care only in the case of CMRR because that is hurting us then other it shows infinite value otherwise you can always assume them for equivalence of this. So, if I substitute all this you can see of course, this is not exactly what is given in a book, but you can write down V out is G m 1 G m 4 upon G o 1 plus G o 3 plus G m 3. Many a times instead of using R o in parallel it is much easier for us if we use G o's because then you can directly add is that correct many a times for the circuit people you should realize that if they are in parallel uh, r is in parallel it is much easier to add g's rather than putting 1 upon r plus 1 upon r plus 1 upon r. So, I normally suddenly convert at times. So, please do not feel anything wrong this is just the way of solving simplicity uh, using simple solutions. So, g m 1 by g m 2 upon g o 1 plus g o 3 plus g m 3 plus 1 upon g o 2 g o 4 in plus the second term which is for the V i d by 2 is G m 1 by G o 2 plus G o 4 into V i d by 2. So, once I get the relationship V out and V i d by 2, I can always calculate V out by V i d which is essentially the gain of this single ended differential amplifier in difference mode is that correct? This is not a common mode gain it is difference mode gain A V d m this is essentially a AVDM case. Okay, so, please write down if you wish uh, because I am not sure whether this is given in Radhavi, okay, I did not check may be there okay. at least they do not use G's the way I use. Okay. Of course, I also when I see that book then I see oh they are using different terms, but I feel it is much easier instead of RO writing write G's which is easy to add. Of course, this method of writing G's have come from you know uh, my other colleague Professor Sharma who has very fond of conductance rather than resistance. Things which can conduct is what all electrical engineering is about. If it is stopping it then it is not good. Na? So, I think I also once a while take his cue and I use G's because I see in almost all his analysis he will rarely use R's he always write one upon G or G. So, I figured out that I should also follow after so many years of my friendship 35 years. Okay. So, I and just make a fun of it nothing very serious is that ok. So, I divide this V i 2 by V i d and then I get this expressions and then I start putting G m 3 is much larger than G o 1 or G o 3 and therefore, I neglect those terms. So, I got V out by V i d which is G m 1 upon G o 2 plus G o 4 okay. and uh, if I sub is that clear. If I neglect these two terms this becomes 1 G m 3 by G m 3 this becomes 2 this 2 cancels. So, G m 1 upon G o 2 plus G o 4 is essentially your difference gain may be I should write A V D m. So, which is what is G m 1 why I wrote this expression is relevant for us because from a designer's point of view let us say what is G m 1. G m 1 is substituted at 2 times current in the each arm is I s s by 2 w by L 1 into beta and dash divided by lambda 2 plus lambda 4 into I s s by 2. Okay lambda 2 and lambda 4 are not same why 2 is n channel device 4 is a p channel device. So, lambda is not identical for n channel of course, you can make this in process forcibly, 
but in normal circumstances lambda 2 will not be equal to lambda 4. They may not differ drastically, but since the mobilities in p channels are lower than n channels, normally resistances are higher in p channels once a while you think of it. So, it may be better to use p channel as loads, is that correct? Because it will give larger resistance per se. Okay. The issue here is lambda 2 by lambda 4, ISS by 2 I took it up. So, it is beta n dash w by L 1 by ISS and what is the output resistance I said? You do not have to put a source and measure because it is obviously visible in calculation. So, it is 1 upon g o 2 plus g o 4, maybe I should write g o 4 which is like this and case which is what I say normally may not be, but if case you make lambda 2 equal to lambda 4 lambda this will become lambda ISS which is same as what we had derived earlier one upon lambda IDS. Okay. So, once we get output resistance we get the gain the two major specification for DFAM have been found out and they are functions of what the bias current and the W by L s is that correct the bias current and the W by L. So, you have as a design parameter with you there are only two parameters governing the gain. One is the size of the M 1 M 2 and which is same which is which is essentially govern is governing G M 1 okay. and the bias current I S S which is also controllable externally is that correct either by the transistor which I will put for source. ISS either the size of that transistor or the bias of that transistor or a mirror it from some other source which actually will for exactly the current which I wish. I okay. will show you mirror once later when I calculate. So, essentially I, I am trying to tell you that the designer I now have related okay, if you want so much gains 10 to power 4, 10 to power what a number you say. Also in many cases in books we should, should know this the gains are always specific voltage gains will be specified as voltage by voltage. Though it does not mean because it essentially is trying to tell that it is uh, both uh, dimensions are same, but it is written V by V. Why? Because it is trying to show you it is a voltage amplifier is that correct. So, you also should get imbibed this because there are four kinds of amplifiers which we can use we all of you have gone through this earlier output current input voltage output voltage input current input voltage input currents and output input voltage input output voltage. So, four possible. So, it is called conduct trans conductance trans resistance current amplifier voltage amplifier all four ok. Is that clear? So, this is essentially what we are doing and therefore, we say that this V by V only tells input is voltage and output is also voltage. So, I did not write, but I just thought you should know many books or many places the data sheets give V by V. So, what is V by V? It is trying to tell you it is the voltage gain dependent terms which have been specified. Sometimes they may write V by I, I by V, I by I. So, these are the methods of representing the amplifier outputs or gains. If we further make an assumption uh, which we will we are know that the p channel devices are same and n channel devices are also identical to each other which they will be in most cases. We are now saying as means w by l 1 is equal to w by l 2 and w by l 3 is equal to w by l 4. This is not a necessity, but it is much easier to lay out much easier to derive if these are available to you, but that is not a necessity expression does not require anything equivalence of that. If the, they are different, we can calculate with all different RO, different GM, so what? I mean, there is nothing very seriously prob, uh, problematic for getting all difference. But in normal case, DFAM design on an integrated circuit will give you this GM1 very much same as GM2 and GM3 is very much same as GM4. Okay. In which case, one, one of these sizes, if you figure out 1 and 3 or 2 and 4, you will be able to why I am telling you this word 2 and 4 is related to output resistance. So, some way if I am giving you a IDS, I am actually giving you some way W by L's okay, indirectly okay, 2 and 4, but if I know 2 and 4 I know L 1 and 3 as well. Okay. So, this is the design issue.
from what data is given to you and what specs are given to you and what is expected out of you, then you can figure out which term is I show you today at the end some few expressions when I design things something. Okay. So, is that okay, but I repeat this is not a necessity, this is just for the heck of it and in general I see people believe that it should be symmetric as much as possible, they try it, but that does not mean it is a necessity as far as the gain or any of the parts are concerned. There is a problem why it is normally kept which I did not say so far is there is an issue of stability of an amplifier if they are not equal the capacitances will not be equal and there is a possibility of two stage amplifier oscillating. Okay. Having done this small signal analysis all through, uh, let us look at little bit carefully other two, two or three parameters which are essentially large signal parameters. What does that large signal means? If the input voltage is not only restricted to Vid by 2 and minus Vid by 2, okay, if they exceed what would happen? One of the major worry of any amplifier is and that question was asked and I think most of you must have written correctly that we are looking for large linearity that is V O V in relation should have uh, stand unity or whatever number for a larger input voltage swing, is that correct? If that happens, then we say we have input swing can be larger. So, larger inputs can be amplified, that is called larger large linearities. We also want, as I said, we do not want linear mode because transistor is in linear mode is non saturation. So, square law terms will not be possible and it will give lot of distortions. So, that question which was asked is large linearity, but device should still remain in saturation and not uh, linear mode means it is in non saturation. We have already shown V O V I characteristics if V in is outside the slope part, the V O is not uh, even sometimes governed by V in, it may become constant okay. that is exactly what the saturation part appears there. So, this issue we will look into this again, uh, we want to see the limits. Okay, so, these are called limits or ranges, two ranges of interest to me one is at the input the other is at the output. The output voltage maximum to minimum what I can get is called the output swing. Okay. So, one of the spec of a difference amplifier or for that matter op amp is the output swing, how much output maximum can you can achieve from a given circuit which you design. The other of course, is how much maximum to minimum input I can vary which will still give me gain is that correct. So, what does that mean the device still remains in saturation for those inputs beyond that they may not. So, I will figure out where they turn over from non saturation and then say okay, this is the limit for me. Okay. Now, in some cases that limit may still have distortion because the linearity may not be as good but does not matter you may actually tune some of the distortions or you may tolerate some of those distortions. Okay. Which distortion is most important? Third harmonic distortion, think of it why THD is most dominant distortion problem than the second harmonic which most people first derive, but it is the third harmonic which essentially is the trouble creator. So, linearity is to be such that the third harmonic distortion is small. Okay, so, we will see that when the game comes. Okay, so, here is an amplifier again same thing which I showed. Now, let us say case I just tell you how the data can be given to you that this is not being used specifically here, but just to show you for a let us say I have a 5 volt supply this 5 volt has supply has come from 0.35 micron process. Okay. We used to use 5 micron. So, all the books whenever you see barring the latest ones which may probably have 1.2 volt supply. Otherwise, this is the data given by everyone. So, I thought if, if at all someday you are going to read the book you should have the this. Okay. The V D D is 5 volt uh, V T O of N cha O means stand for without substrate bias. Typically, it will be 0.7 volt let us say plus minus this is the tolerance you will get it. Similarly, VTOP will be 
assuming right now we are using the same I mean many technologies allow that minus 0 0.7 plus minus 0 0.15 and for this 3 point 3 micron uh, 0.35 micron technology you can use beta and dash which is mu and c ox. This data of course, I will provide you whichever technology file I will use the data will be coming from that technology file. Okay. But as far as we are right now concerned it is the numbers are only numbers. Okay. We are not saying that this is specific to a technology we may say okay, this is the data okay, or this is the spec. In reality spice will not allow you random numbers for a given node they will specify each of them because their oxide thickness are known their capacitance are known, they know everything there. Okay. So, they will specify automatically these values which you do not have to even worry, but if you want to read you they will show you also what are the values they are being using in this. So, typically uh, beta n dash is used 110 microam per volt square please take it units should be correct in every sense because this is something I do not like people do not putting any units sometimes I also forget, but if I do I write because I am a teacher you are a student okay, you have no rights. Okay. So, this is micro amps per volt square beta p dash is chosen 55 what is that means half of that means the ratio of mobility is chosen as 2 okay, mu n by mu p is 2. If they specify something else obviously, this numbers will also change. Okay, there is another number which is what we are going to use is called input common mode voltage which is defined as VICM and typically for this supply. Okay, we will come back this VI this is what one of the thing which we want to calculate right now or evaluate, but right now assume it for this is roughly 2 volts which is fixed. Uh, w by L for all transistors chosen here are 2, okay. no reason just that. Is that okay? So, if I use this, okay. I mean this is a data probably I may use in my problem. So, that is why I give you data. It is not that this data is very relevant data or something. This is typically for 0.35 micron, most people believe this is okay values. Okay. In reality, the table from SPICE will be made available to you. Whatever specs they get it, they will specify. So, those values are only arbitrary from my side, but they will give you ex exact values. Many books actually gives you data files. Okay. If you see a book they will for a given technology they will give you tables for all parameters T ox everything water and variations everything they will specify okay. all C G S C G D every capacity everything they will specify for you. Okay. Of course, per micron they will specify because width will change the net capacitance, but they will specify all data file, data file will give every detail of that. So, please if you have already done NG spice or whatever spice see a technology file there and you will see all these things are provided by them. The there are of course, uh, the spectre or spice does not allow so much easily, but there is a model card in spice which you can write yourself. So, it is not that what their default values are there you have to only work with it. You can change your model parameters and still work on it if you have use model card of your own. So, do not kick up and come and say ki sir wo to fix it. you can always change your spec of your choice by putting another model card there. I am not sure with NG spice or spice 2 g 3.3 has that, but just figure it out. The model card allows you to specify all mu's, t ox everything of your choice. So, please take it these are some issues of interest this figure is very important I think this is what we are going to explain once again. If I plot the V out versus input V i d I figure it out from here uh, this minus V i d by 2 somewhere if you look at it. very even up to minus V i d by 2 there is some slope there is some slope beyond that it becomes almost constant is that clear. So, we say okay, what should be up to this or up to this what should be the range 
up to which device can be treated in saturation. So, here is the figure we, which we have plot, this need not be exact numbers, but just to show you. If I see from V i d minus somewhere close to V out of 1 volt for example, for V t of these values around 0.2 V i d or something, it starts climbing. At this value, device enters saturation. Below that, device is in non-saturation or linear mode. This active word is used by analog people very much in a wrong fashion because active essentially saturated mode in MOS transistors. Okay, because that's the time where device as amplifier is active. So I think this active word is not very true, but you should maybe we should write non-saturated because that may create some bias. Okay. So, similarly if I see go beyond uh, from 0 towards plus V i d, somewhere close to this value of 0.2 or something V i d, I figure it out at around 4 volt of output, the device enters non-saturation. From where this value is again V g s minus V t exceeds V i d, V d s or less than V d s, as long as V t s is not so, we have now said gain can only occur when both M2 and M4 are in saturation. Okay. At the output, M2 and M4 are the two transistors. So, if they are not in saturation, this RO parallel, this will not be there, GMs will not be there, and therefore, by the way, you calculate GM linear and figure it out why I keep saying it is much lower. Otherwise, you say why push the GM hai na, but that is much smaller than GM sat and therefore, this is the game. So, we say now we start looking into the please keep your figure up there I, I will keep figure for myself here. We would say if V d a for the M 2 transistor to be in saturation V d s 2 which is the drain to source voltage of that transistor should be larger than or equal to V g s 2 minus V t n is that okay? V g s 2 minus V t n. This is straightforward transistor theory. However, if you look at the V d s 2, it is nothing but this voltage minus V s, call it okay. This you call V s 2, though they are equal, but these are voltage at the source, okay, which are grounded, but let us put them there. Okay, so, I say okay, then it is V out minus V s 1 is my V d s 2, which should be greater than. Now, this is very interesting. The V g, this V g 2 part is essentially the maximum input available and from where saturation is guaranteed is V i b d V i d by 2. So, that is the swing available for you V i c m is the end of that and V i d by 2 you are going to put. So, what is the range in which the because we are finding bound. So, what is the maximum available to you is this much. Okay. So, if I do that analysis, so I say V i c m minus is actually V g 1 V g 2 minus V s 1 which is V g s 2 minus V t n, but have you yes. What is V i c m? It is the input common mode range maximum and minimum range. So, if you are away from V i d by 2 up to which transistor remains saturation the test we are giving, but it will still require 1 V i d by t to turn it I mean to have a signal. So, the difference available for me to see whether device still in saturation is V i c m given to you minus V i d by 2. Since V i d by 2 is this, but essentially the transition occurs very close to 0 itself. So, that term can still be neglected by you, but just to say that it is there I kept it. Normally books do not put that term, they say it is only V i c m, but I say okay, in case you feel it the reason why they are doing it because the transition if you see is occurring very close to 0. Okay. Is that clear and that is why they normally neglect that V i d to term, but if case you want to keep you can keep, but that is smaller than other values. So, it will automatically be numerically neglected, physically may be accepted. 
is that okay now i always try to say people that why people are saying something in the books or otherwise so explanation there is nothing a very great i am telling okay so i wrote that if the transition set to non set occurs very close to the zero vid value then we can neglect this term anyway so we say essentially what we are saying the v out should be greater than v icm minus v tm now similarly i can calculate the limit for this was for m2 is that correct this was for m2 now i calculate when m4 will remain in saturation so what is the criteria for m4 then that the vds4 should be larger than vgs4 minus vtp okay vtp is the p channel threshold so i say and this has to be subtracted by numerically so i put a mod otherwise it will get added you know minus of minus may get added so i just put it a mod so if that is so it is vsg4 minus vtp but let's look at the game uh ab ye aapko to ye value se lena hai okay ye iska gate hai aur ye iska source hai to ye jo hai ye vsg4 ye hai now we can see from here vds4 this value is how much vdd minus v out vdd minus v out so i substitute vds4 is vdd minus v out okay it should be less than now because this is minus is that correct change the equality so v out source is for a p channel source is power supply end why otherwise holes cannot come down okay okay so if i write this then v out should be le great less than equal to vdd minus vsg4 my plus vtp i flip the inequality if i get this how many v out i got it now first i got it v out from the m2 side the other i am now getting from m4 side which one you feel will be larger please remember from the we are input side is coming from the ground side look at it this is what input to ground but this is what output to the ground okay so it goes to ground but vdd ground is ac ground but it is vdd so always the output side has larger uh, value from the vdd side and smaller value from input side or lower side and therefore m2 decides the minimum value of the swing and m4 decides the maximum value of outputs so if i do this expressions which you have you written down so if i do that clearly the output swing of a defam is v out max minus v out min which is v out max is vdd minus vsg4 plus vtp v out min is equal to vicm minus vtn and therefore please take it that this is a, what is the criteria i have come from that m2 m4 should remain in saturation so from there i derive these two values and say difference between them is the maximum swing output can have uh, this has some uh, okay ramification word was difficult so it has an influence Uh, on the next device input characteristics what voltage it receives okay so in this analysis uh, vsg4 actually evaluated yeah yeah we will we are not i have said we cannot evaluate vsg4 is known to us we out one theek hai na but pehle wale stage par usme to gm g wo to value waise pata hoga na okay you are right i am not denying but I, why i left this because some what will be given to me and what will be uh, right now i don't know so i am keeping expressions as they are okay when i evaluate i'll figure out what is given to me and i'll come back to the evaluate this value from each other either they may give me this or they may give me something else so i will arrive at this value from please take it what is vgs essentially can be written as in terms of ids is equal to vt plus under root of this i i terms you can always write so whichever way i am provided vsg i will be able to calculate anyway 
is that correct? So, right now I do not want to say what is that. You are perfectly justified in asking, but I did not evaluate earlier because I will see which way I will evaluate. Is that correct? If I know that is this current, I will say I know how much is because this current will be our output current is decided by something which we will see now. Okay. So, that also may decide VSG4. Gain is essentially is very small because the end we are looking at the end of the gains, linearity just going out of linearity. So, their gains are anyway very small, is that clear? If you are in this range, then only is you dv0 by dvn is very large, but if you are here, you are anyway very small gains. So, we did not consider assuming unity gains, which is not true, but to some extent it is okay. Is that okay? But these are bounds, we are not saying these are the values, these are the bounds up to which this swing can be off. Please remember I have put larger or less than, I never said equal to, the equal is the better possibility, but may not, they should actually satisfy the inequality, is that correct. Okay. Uh, so, one swing, uh, one parameter of or one specification of diffam we have seen gain, other we have seen the output resistance, third we have seen swing. And the fourth we will now see which is what is called an input that I V I C M I use. So, now I will derive that I C M R another important specification of a diffam is called input common mode range. Okay. Is that okay? So, should we go ahead? A was output swing, so B is named as input common mode range. So, what is the input variations you can have from V D D to V G 1 is one possibility and from V G 1 to V S S or ground is the other possibility that is how input will vary is that correct. Please take it input will vary from source to the V G uh, V P to this or from V G to V D D as we did for output same way we now do it for input side is that okay, Raj. Okay, from V D D we can reach V G 1 through M 3 and M 1. Please look at it, the figure again. If I have to reach here, I can say drop across this, drop across this and subtract here or add whatever signs properly I get. So, one path is like this, which is the other path. Other is to come here and you directly write from here. Okay. If you do this, so there are possibility of either this, but if you reach this value, you can also reach from here to here. So, V G 1 can be attained through this way or through this way or through this way, which is actually these two are identical because this V D S will be related to V G D. Okay. So, either I come from here or I come from here, I have the access to reach V G 1 and same is true for V G 2. Okay, so, if this is what I am saying, I have two paths. So, I said same way I said there are similarly there will be two paths for M, uh, V G 2. We can reach through M 4 and M 2. Is that correct? It is identical. Jo either hai, wo either hai. Each path will give us V i c max and we will figure out whichever one is lesser, okay. that will be my range. Because lesser why I should choose? Because I am finding the limit up to which device will remain in saturation, is that correct? So, I will figure out two V i c m's okay, and then I will say which one is smaller that I will use. So, here are the two way of doing it. Path 1 which is uh, v i c maximum 1 is v g 1 max. Please remember what is the input common mode value, which is the input maximum value available to you, which allows device to remain in saturation. So, it is v g 1 max. How much is v g 1 from the figure? This value minus this value, so you reach here, okay. that means you reach here. 
minus this value okay minus this value okay so not minus why we are climbing up so it is minus minus that is plus so vdd minus vsg3 minus vds1 plus vgs1 is vgg1 max however at the age of saturation what is vds1 when this transition is m and this vds minus vt or vgs minus vt is equal to vds that is the age the low least value of that so i write vds1 is vgs1 minus vtn at the age of saturation so i write vic max 1 is vdd minus vshd and i re replace this vds1 by this okay this substitute here so i get this v vdd minus vshd by 3 plus vtn is the value which i am going to get what is uh, is that clear to you what did i say i have substituted vds1 in terms of vgs1 minus vt okay and then that vgs1 cancelled and only this minus this cancelled and vt became positive so uh, in terms so it is vic maximum 1 is vdd minus vsg3 plus vtn the other path which is part 2 okay which is vdd minus vds4 okay this minus this drop so you reach this output minus vds please look at it what is the other path i come here vds4 vdd minus vds4 minus vds2 once i reach here i just add vgs2 to come here or vgs1 to come to the other side is that correct so if that's so i have solved now the other one vic maximum 2 is vdd minus vds4 saturation minus vds2 plus vgs2 is vic max but what is vds2 at the age of saturation vgs2 minus vtn okay so substitute this here is that correct at the age of saturation which is the limiting point for then the saturation will go so that's the value i want max i am looking na? so the age i am looking so we yeah, i substitute this vds to here okay magnitude wise you are right subtract vsd by 2 but it doesn't matter as far as the p channel device everything is in opposite sense okay so it doesn't matter okay so if i substitute now this i get vic maximum 2 is vdd minus vds4 plus vdn vtn and uh, but vds4 is vgs4 minus vtn but vgs4 is vgs3 we are connected them okay so i write vds4 is vgs3 minus vtn and substitute that again here oh so, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, but VTP is equal to VTN, so it doesn't matter. अभी ऐनी रहने दो. वहाँ P लिखो पर यहाँ N लिख सकते हो. So VIC maximum is VDD plus VSG3 plus 2 VTN is the value of VIC maximum 2. So which one is smaller among the two expressions I derived? One is what was the value I derived first one? एक मिनट यही होगा शायद वो हाँ ये रहा वी आई सी मैक्सिम इज वी डी डी माइनस वी एस जी थ्री प्लस वी टी एन एंड दिस अदर वन इज वी डी डी प्लस वी एस जी थ्री ओके सो वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से वी आई सी मैक्स वन इज स्मॉलर देन वी आई सी मैक्स टू सो वट इज द वी आई सी मैक्स वी शुड यूज is lower one which is vdd minus vsg3 plus vtn is the value we are using for vic maximum input common mode range which will allow the transistors to get output both sides and still remain in saturation is this value one of this value which is the other value i'll going to get from from the ground side or the from the source side is that okay 
method. So, please take it in all analysis of amplifier the max value come from VDD side and min value come from ground side or VSS side. Okay. So, let us derive the VIC minimum part. So, what is the path of VIC minimum for either transistor? This drop, please look at it from ground or VSS, this drop plus this, is that clear? This plus this, this plus this. So, that is the only VIC available to you to reach to the VG1 or VG2. Okay. So, if I use this and we do not have to be, since we have VIC minimum is VG1 or VG2 minimum to VSS path, we derived VIC minimum is VG minimum or VG2 minimum, which is VSS plus VDS5 plus VGS1 or VGS2 because we are assuming VSS to be 0 anyway, okay. drop at the P point is 0. So, I get this value which is V d sat 5 plus if VSS is taken 0 then V d sat 5 plus V g s 1 or V g s 2 which are typically V d sat please take it V g s minus V t for the data given to you is typically the value which you get at the age is around 200 millivolts. Okay. But this is again for the 0 0.7 volt supply. Okay. So, one should not use uh, 0 0.7 volt VTs. If you are another technology, this 200 millivolt is not true. This 200 millivolts, I just want to show you order in which these numbers appear. Okay. So, VD set is typically for 200 millivolt for the source which is used, current source. So, we now define input common mode range as V i c max minus V i c min and this is the value which you please remember this normally will be specified by us, how much is the drop across the current source okay. that is V d s 5 is normally specifiable. These will be given to your technology parameters, this you will have to calculate from currents or voltages through whichever you come this is given to you. So, everything is given to you, so you know ICMR or if I give you ICMR one of the parameters which is missing can be the value. Typically VDD, VT and this will not be only thing will you will be able to evaluate is VSG 3 or equal to VSG 4 if I have specified you input common mode range is that correct. This is the range. So, I am essentially specifying to great extent this value, is that clear? Kaun puch raha tha na VSG 3 kahan se yahan se la sakte hain, yadi aap ko yeh specify kar diya jaye, toh baaki sab constants hain, so we can always get VSG 3, okay. Is that point clear? This is a trick in designs, which spec is given and which you have to evaluate. Please remember this VSS is 0 is not a normal case, in most op-amps you will always have dual rail. So, you will have V d d 2.5 and V s s minus 2.5, swing still may be 5. Why there is a necessity of putting a minus supply instead of why not single supply 0 to 5 or 0 to 3.3. Okay. Why people in analog in specific always want to run dual rails? There are many other four reasons, but the major reason why we did was reduce noise considerations. Okay. Okay, is that expression okay? So, ICMR is V d d minus V s g 3 plus V t n minus V d sat 5 plus V g s 1. Okay, so, let us do the next parameter of my interest. I have done so many, I am now giving one by one all the spec for a given diffam and whatever I am giving from diffam are almost true for every one of them for op-amp with few more with op-amp. The next important parameter for me is this power dissipation, this also will be specified. From where this gets specified, why should I specify power dissipation? Do you know from where this power is actually getting limited? You can say power supply, yeah that is a great issue, but that is not the only reason, temperature. So, essentially it is decided by the change in temperature of the device 
and we know around 150 plus the junction loses its junction property and because of that no junction will remain as junction versus the leakage current will go so high it will be higher than the what we call diffusion current will be dominated by drift currents. So, we want to avoid that situation. So, so what do we do then? How do I decide that? I say okay, how much is the sink heat sink I am providing for the chip? That is called the thermal resistance available for to the ambient from the source of heat. So, I solve a thermal conductivity equation, continuity equation and figure out for given thermal time constants that is the conductivity of the materials I am going to have in series of them and I figure out how much heat I can dissipate so that I mean temperature does not exceed this. Delta T by delta P is called thermal resistance, delta T by delta P is called thermal resistance. So, I must know that for a given temperature rise with the available de thermal resistance of the path, I know how much is delta P possible that is P possible. So, power is limited by the heat sink and not anything else is that correct. If you can remove the heat, you can guess from this your laptops or nowadays iPads or whatever Android based any other uh, handheld system, they have been very low in power for variety of reasons, okay. but their not only their power supply is low, but their the method they have used the materials are much better heat sinking materials. Whereas, in a desktop system huge fans are put because SMPS at least jo main power supply wo kharaab ne ho jaya, sabse pehle dar hai. Do you know the motherboard is fixed with the SMPS used? If your SMPS goes, your motherboard also has to be changed because the voltage we are using is so high for speed that we do not bother heat generation but then heat has to be removed. Okay. That is the reason why power is essentially decided by the thermal gradients you create. Of course, in real chip there are another problem if thermal source is away from the actual ground this and there are huge transistors at different sources they themselves conduct across and then there is a huge thermal pattern comes. So, all device properties are different at different point of time and one does not know what characters you will so, this is called thermal simulations. So, one of the major simulation we do first in real chip design is to do thermal simulation where the pattern thermal patterns are. Okay. Microprocessor may ALU ke pass is a hot spot banta actually. Jal ga pura is ko heat nahi nikal paeta. So, usko distributed circuit kar deta hai ki thoda spread ho jaye. Okay, so, power dissipation is the power supply multiplied by the source current which is IDS 5 in our case. Generally, we will be given P D max or we may say given P D max divided by the supply for the technology node will decide maximum current available to you. Is that correct? What is the source maximum current given to you is decided by the power dissipation for you. Okay. jada current kahi bhi flow nahi hona hai. Please remember this is for one arm. In fact, if there are five arms, you have to divide by five that is power in each arm you have to get and then find the IDS 5 because at any time gradient should not be created. Okay, so, this is one term which is limiting currents. Please remember if I change the current what changes? Everything changes. So, for whatever terms I derived everything is related to IDS okay, ISS which means any change there will affect all other parameters. So, we must guard that. The, sec four, the fifth or sixth order number I have made. The next parameter of interest to me is the slew rate. Okay. Now, if you see a simple circuit shown here, this diffam is driving a load capacitance of CL. Okay. So, one can say slew rate is defined as how fast the output rises to the maximum or change from zero, higher to lower or lower to higher. So, essentially it is defined as dv0 by dt rate. If I multiply it by capacitance and divide by capacitance, I get Cl dv0 by dt by Cl which is same as the rate. But what is Cl dv0 by dt is the capacitive current and the maximum current available to you is IDS 5. Okay. We will show you why that is the maximum current in the capacitance. 
will show you the right now it is not so visible but so IDS5 by CL is the slew rate. So what does now I am going to get it? If I am given a specified slew rate so many micro volt per microsecond 10, 20, 100 or whatever number I specify as soon as I specify a slew rate to you and in the load is given to you I am also now giving you limit for IDS5. So kitne jaga se limit mere sir pe aarai wo gain wale keh rahe ki itna chahiye. Ye keh rahe hain itna chahiye, ye keh rahe hain itna chahiye. So which one I should use? Optimal, which satisfy most of them, is that correct? Not all of them exactly, but close to that if you can get. So IDS5 is a design parameter and that is why I say normally I prefer GM by IDS design because IDS is now your design parameter, is that clear? Is that point clear? IDS decide that is source current decides how much is everything going to be and therefore you must actually look for this value from variety of specification given to you. Slew rate bola, go ek fix karke gaya, power bola, gm bola, gain wala, all ek hai, ye bhi itna bhi nahi. If you look at the uh, frequency response, the bandwidth part, let us say for this all other capacitance are not very relevant which may not be true and this is the dominant pole. So the 3 dB value which is my bandwidth is 2 pi R out CL. So R out is this 1 upon 2 pi 3, 3 dB, 1 upon lambda I okay. What is lambda? What is the R? 1 upon lambda I, maha bhi I aega. So is R out ko idhi mein apne is transistor ke hisaab se likhu. So it is 1 upon GO2 plus GO4 or lambda P IDS 5 by 2. However, the difference gain if I now substitute GMR this like this which I had derived now I can see from here IDS5 can be evaluated from power supply requirements that is power requirement, fluid requirement. I may choose one IDS5 and then start looking for the gains, the power dissipation, the slew rates. Is that clear? Once I fix this, then I will compare with my specs given, then I will tweak, okay. change this, that is what and that is why I keep saying nowhere the gains will be specified as 1000, greater than equal to 1000. Okay. So you have play enough, slew rate will be also said not less than so many micro volt per microsecond, not less than, is that clear? Same way power dissipation maximum allowed is this. Okay. It does not mean you cannot have lower power dissipation. It does not say gain should not be more than what you specify. It says it is the bound which I am giving. The designer should choose values which suit therefore all specs as much as possible. Is that clear to you? So IDS5 being my design parameter, let us say if you fix something and your gain does not come what is being specified. So increase W by 1 L1 is one possibility or increase the IDS5 itself. Okay. If you increase W by L1 indirectly you are also increasing IDS1 which is connected to GM1. So please verify which term GM by IDS I told you. Na? Please take it GM by IDS I am looking into this will decide my GM part. IDS will be decided by the other three. So I am a design parameter therefore is GM by IDS, not GM, not IDS. Though I can independently look for them, but the ratio should be used by me as my design specification. Is that clear to you? GM is W by L1 related, so uske size kya mujhe mil gaya. Okay. But IDS, so that you get the gain, you get the slew rate, you get the power dissipation, you get every spec which you want to attain to this. That is the minimum value which is allowed. Yeah, huh, so he's wrong. It should be higher than that. Anything which is higher slew rate, I am not worried about. This is the minimum value I must attain to. Okay. Think of it. Slew rate is always specified not less than so much. Okay. The minimum value of slew rate is 40 millivolt micro volt per microsecond. Okay. okay. 
So, is that point clear as a designers what is the criteria I am saying? GM and IDS ratio is I am adjusting, is that clear to you? And that decides me almost all specifications. So, as a designer, I keep watching what parameters I should tweak so that I get whatever specification for an amplifier is specified, is that clear? So, difference between analysis and design is clear. In analysis, we have derived the expressions, but we never look back and say why, why, what should I do? Now, here we shall start, go, go back and see, oh, if I change this, what will happen? If I do this, what will happen? So, I design, okay, I design only on two such things and I will be satisfied. Before we quit for the day, uh, we will solve one problem, at least expressions I will give you again. Since we are now going to, now even 0.35 is a short channel device but uh, 90 nanometers below is certainly very, very short channel device and the current technology of RF and digital is around 45 down. So, uh, many worries are there, but one of the major circuit worries is what I am looking into. Of course, there are variation in mobilities because of uh, mobility become functions of fields both E x and E y. So, gradual channel approximation is no more valid. Depletion approximation is also a pseudo approximation. V t reduces with reduction in channel length. Please remember higher the channel length V t is nearly constant. As channel length goes down V t keeps falling. Okay. Then the worry which is most me is the third one which is increase of R s and R d source resistance and drain resistance of the source drain areas. As everything shrinks rho L by A actually increases, is that clear? Because that increases, that series resistance of source and drain is one of the major worry. Of course, there are huge problems in leakage currents, but that we will see later, is that clear? So, there are of course, there are many more short channel effects, right now I specified this. From the circuit point of view, I know even if it reduces, I know how much mobility changes I know for that how much. So, I am not worried too much on them, I am designing with this, but this something I have not earlier calculated, now I may have to. See remember mobility and V t s are still difficult values, but they will be specified for a node, okay. so which is not in my hand, but I, I know okay, I have to work with this. Leakage current is also technology dependent, of course, is circuit dependent also to great extent. But in that case, at least we are designing from the process itself to minimize the leakages. This something is not care taken care in long channel and this is the only one which I am going to show you. Please do not think there is no influence of others, everyone is influencing badly, but the one which I can immediately see my worry is this. Do you believe short channel device will be better or a long channel device? Okay, the criteria is the linearity, because amplifier what is important? The linearity. Do you believe that the short channel device will be more linear or larger linearity than the long channel? What is your idea, concept? Okay, the drain resistance anyway adds up to the drain value R O plus something that that is small, we do not worry too much, but if the source side has the resistance, this R S X is the source resistance of the M1 and M2. What do they act like? Source degeneration, is that correct? Great things happen. Okay, so, let us do uh, for a normal this device, we have done it VGS1 is VTN plus 2 IDS1 by beta 1, no I RSX used right now, but VG, uh, anyway uh, VGS2 is VTN this. However, V g 1 minus V g s 1 minus I d s R x is the value now, this value was not there earlier, in short channel this value appeared and that of course, from the other side V g 2 minus V g s 2 I d s 2 R x. Now, we define a term I o d s which is output current difference of output currents I d s 1 minus I d s 2 and which we know is g m v i d, okay. we know this we have already calculated. So, what is the measure of linearity? Whatever is the input current change, how much is the output current change? If that is better, I say, yeah, we have better linearity. If not, I would say it is less linearity. Okay. 
we want I O D proportional to I in, uh, so if they are larger then I will say oh, we are better linear. Is that expression all of you? Because G M V I D is the current, the transistor converts voltage into current. So I will see linearity is only coming because of the current available. If current reduces, that is the V I D term, no? we send a range I C M R, beyond that it is not linear. So, we are looking for where up to which this relation is valid. Please remember this expression we will use often VGAC VTN plus under root 2 ID by beta is a very standard way of replacing IDS into VGS or VGS into IDS. Okay. This is a very uh, standard technique. Okay. In a long channel device, please remember what is non-linearity of IV character, uh, IO characteristics or VOVN characteristics is can be done by Taylor, Taylor series expansions. Okay. If I do Taylor series expansion, the IODS by ISS, uh, if you want you can go, uh, read some papers, uh, I have just copied from some paper, so just check it. IODS by ISS, VID by VOV, see I am plotting the ratio of output current with VID, is that transconductance word clear, output is the current, input is the voltage. So, I am just doing that. This is current which is actually getting at the output, ISS is the normalized current and VID is your voltages. So, IODS by S is VID by VOV minus half 1 8th VID plus higher terms. These two are good enough, cubic term is good enough. So, if you are long channel device, this is the expression, is that okay? IOD by ISS. VID by VOE minus 1 8th VID by VOE cube. However, in a short channel device, what should I replace now? This VOV will be then become because of the degeneration 1 plus GM RS times VOV. We have done it earlier. I am just replacing source degeneration value. So, the new value of VOV will be 1 plus GM RS time VOV. RS is the source resist, uh, current source resistance minus one eighth of this. Is now do you see the denominator is increasing in the uh, this? Since the denominator is cube here and increasing, okay. Short channel case different amplifier with RSX will show you a better linear characteristics than the long channel device. Uh, what? That is true. See, what is design? If you achieve something, you lose something. Okay. But do you get the point? This was something which many people did not realize that short channel device everything goes wrong. Here is something can do good. Okay. Your linearity may improve. Okay. And that is something why we when a new design I start. Uh, I should look into whether which technology I am using and what linearity addition I got through. That has an advantage on output swings okay, because some application may help you in that. Okay. Is that you said na, someone said when the last line leak there if IDRX drop will also reduce GM equivalently. Okay. So, I am not saying that there is no penalty, okay. it is a penalty, but at the gain of linearity. 